I'm just really satisfied with the details. Hey guys, it's Phil. It took a little while, but I'm finally back to talk about the Frozen Sonic Mini 4K. And so I really put it through its paces and I printed a lot of things with it. And uh, first, let me say, I was originally in my previous video where I unboxed it, I was talking about the brown and I wasn't really too crazy about it. But after I started using it and looking at it more, and I said, you know, it actually might work well for uh, like an office environment. It looks a little bit more sophisticated than a bright orange. So uh, as a little recap, I've got a few notes here about it. It has a 4K monochromatic screen under the vat. It is 3840 by 2160, and that monochrome screen is supposed to last for over 2,000 hours before you need to replace it. Uh, yeah, these are a consumable. They do need to be replaced uh, eventually, but with the monochrome screen, it'll last a lot longer. Uh, the uh, prints are uh, high-res prints, uh, 722 pixels per inch. Print volume uh, is larger than the original Sonic Mini. It's a 5.2 by 2.9 by 5.2 inches. Uh, it is a little bit pricier, but we'll see if you think it's worth that price. It is uh, $330, well, $329.99 versus the Sonic Mini is $199.99. Uh, it is currently, uh, last I checked, available for pre-order. It's not actually out yet. Uh, yeah, so a uh, big thanks to Frozen for sending one to me early to check out. I will have to send this one back, unfortunately. But, yeah, so after this review, we're going to be saying goodbye to it. Uh, let's see, uh, compared to the original Sonic Mini, this one does have a fan. So, it is a bit noisier. Uh, in the Sonic Mini, I was amazed. There was no fan noise. And, like, the only noise was the motor going up and down every, you know, few seconds or so. But, uh, yeah, so this one's a little bit noisier. The fan is running constantly while it's printing. Good news is, as soon as your print stops, the fan shuts off. So, uh, at least it's not going to be running using up your electricity after it stops. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it there. Let's, uh, let's talk about some of the models that I've printed from it. Hey guys, Editor Phil here, just throwing in something I forgot to put in the video, and that is please subscribe, because only 3% of the viewers are actually subscribing. And I could really use the extra numbers to help companies see that, you know, this is a channel they want to help support. All right, thanks. Back to the video. Let's see. I've got some notes for them all here. So, um, originally when I started this out, uh, the first thing I printed was... Whoop, <laughs> the first thing I printed was, of course, the uh, frozen ring that comes on the uh, flash drive and it looks good but it was a little bit muddy around the details which was a little disappointing because this is supposed to be really high detail so uh, I contacted them and they sent me their settings that they really prefer to use that's what they test the machines with uh, so I used those settings and uh, made a few tweaks and uh, I didn't bother to print this one again, but I did notice it looks much better in my next models. Okay, put that down. Next one I have on here is... Oh, this castle. I just finished this this morning. It just came out of the cleaner. Uh, just got dried. Uh, unfortunately, the bottom of this one got messed up. I think it was uh, because of the positioning that I had it. At. It was just laying flat in the, um, the build plate. Uh, I probably should have tilted a little bit to avoid the suction on the bottom. But otherwise, the upper part, the detail, looks really amazing. And you'll be able to see that on the screen here. 
Uh, it's really, really tiny details, and the little uh, uh, evergreen trees here, the tips of them are very pointy. You can actually uh, kind of injure yourself if you were to lean on it. But yeah, that one, I'm really liking that one. This uh, one came from Dana Jax from Graven Guild. They shared it on Reddit. Uh, it's available on My Mini Factory. They had just made it available for free for a couple of days. Uh, then it went back up to the price, which is, I think, $3. Um, okay, next up is Oogie Boogie from... Uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas, and he was shared uh, originally by 3D Printing Nerd, uh, Joel Telling. Uh, it was made by Chaos Core and posted on Thangs. It is available for download. Uh, oh, right, this one and the other one, the castle, were both using the uh, Frozen's Aqua Gray 4K resin that they sent me along with this. Uh, that really contributes to the detail you can see in here. And you can really see all the little stitches and even some of the uh, burlap texture on him. It's really nice. And so this one was, uh, I scaled him down to half size, 50% when I printed him. So the original is much bigger. Uh, so uh, I guess you could Call him an itty bitty oogie boogie. Oh, uh, next one. Uh, this was a tree that I scanned from my park nearby about uh, two years ago. I made this 3D scan, and I was like looking for things that are really detailed to print with this, and I thought of this, and it came out really nice, except for one portion over here that uh, somehow broke. I don't know where it went. It wasn't in my cleaning solution, it was not in the vat, <laughs> no idea where it went. But anyway, the rest of it, yeah, it looks really nice and detailed. A funny story, I scanned this park at the tree a couple years ago, and after the print was done, I thought, oh, it would be fun to take it back to the original tree and compare them. But I couldn't find the tree, and I thought, that's weird. So I went back and looked at the photos from the... Uh, original photogrammetry scan and found out, yeah, I was looking in the right place, but I guess the over two years the tree had changed so much that it just wasn't visible anymore. Or it looked completely different. But yeah, I'm really happy with how that came out, aside from the little flaw up there. That looks really nice. So this is the last one in the Frozen Aqua Gray 4K. I'm gonna have to put the tablet down for this. I'll be right back. There she is. That is the Baroness from G.I. Joe. This took, uh, I had a few failures with this, but it Printed very well um, after overall. Uh, I did decide to take the uh, the base. I didn't want to waste all this really expensive resin and the good printer on just making basically a circle. So I did print this on my FDM printer. It's the uh, EQ Maker Toy DIY. Uh, but yeah, she looks really good. Uh, she was printed in parts that had to be glued together, and the thing was <clears throat> that I found this with every print that is available to download and I have to glue it together. Uh, it says it's print ready, which is kind of true. Uh, it, uh, the parts are separated, but they're all in one object file. <laughs> So if you want to rearrange them in your slicer, you're going to have to separate them all out into separate objects. Uh, the other problem is that it's a peg and hole system uh, where there'll be like a peg in the arm and a hole in the shoulder. And these uh, artists that do these don't tend to make much in the way of a gap in between. Set you up there. 
Oh, oh it's going to fall over. My table is tilted from the weight of this. But, um, yeah, so they, uh, they don't make any gap in between there, so the parts won't quite fit together. So you're, if you print one of these, you will have to uh, do a lot of like sanding and filing to make sure the parts actually fit in. I actually could have done a little bit of a better job. Uh, another thing with this one is that she's supposed to have glasses, if you remember the Baroness is well known for her glasses. But the glasses, even at this size, the glasses were so tiny and thin that they just wouldn't print. I tried several times and they were just too thin and they would fall apart. But right, let's set her here and lean her against the printer. There you go. Oh uh, yes, and this was made by uh, Ricardo Minervino. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, it's it was on Art Station. Uh, I did have to pay five dollars for it. Uh, it is again printed in the Aqua Gray 4K resin. Uh, next one is this is Tifa Lockhart from Final Fantasy. Uh, it was uh, by Printed Obsession on My Mini Factory. This is printed in Soraya Tech Fast, the gray version. It came out really nice. Oh, there's a hair on it. <laughs> but it came out really nice. I'm just really satisfied with the details. Uh, this one, again, was printed in several parts and had to be glued together. But, uh, and again, I had to file down some of the uh, nubbins to fit them in the holes. But otherwise, I'm very happy with it. The details are really good. That's, that's really nice. Set you down there. And finally we have, almost finally, we have Tracer from Overwatch, uh, which I've never actually played Overwatch, uh, but I've seen the character all over the place. Uh, she's even in uh, Ready Player One. Um, yeah, again, this one had to be printed in parts and glued together. And again, the nubbins had to be filed to fit in the holes. But yeah, this, this one was printed in the frozen beige resin. And I really like these details too. I like how uh, her uh, chest and the, the arm with the gun have a ton of little details, like mechanical details in them. And they came out really nice. and. Her hair and goggles look good, too. Yeah, that one is really nice. Okay, and finally, this is a little Pikachu from Thingiverse. Uh, this was printed in the Sorayatech Blue so it's transparent, it, it looks really cool. I love this transparent uh, blue resin, it, it's really neat. Unfortunately, he's got a support inside him that you can see, but it still looks really cool. One really cool thing about printing with clear resin is that you can see the UV light curing each layer. Uh, this resin, I'm gonna do a video on that resin because Sorayatech sent me a bottle to review. Um, but, you know, it takes a little bit of extra work for this resin, but otherwise it looks really good. You can see even the, the, his little fingers on here are really tiny, but you can still see them. And that looks great. I'm going to set you right up there. Don't fall over. No. Oh, he doesn't want to sit up there. Nope. <laughs> All right, we'll have to sit you down here. somewhere. <laughs> there it goes. Okay, so that's it. That's uh, all I've got about the Sonic Mini 4K. Uh, I've been really enjoying using it, uh, aside from the little extra bit of noise, which is okay because I keep it in my basement, so I don't really notice it too much. But that's it. I will put links to where you can get the machine or where you can pre-order the machine or buy it uh, if you're watching this video later 
Um, I will put links to just about everything in here, except for the, the tree, which is my own scan. But I'll put links to wherever you can download or buy any of these models. And so, yeah, that's it. Um, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe. Hit me up on Patreon if you want to help me out uh, testing out new resins or new printers or new filaments for the FDM printers. And yeah, so that's it. I uh, hope you like this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time. As promised, here are the settings that I used in Cheetubox. This one is the Aqua Gray 4K. Here's the Soriatek Gray. Here's the Frozen Beige. And here's the Soriatek Blue.